Welcome to AI Decoded, that time of the week when we look in depth at some of the most eye-catching stories in the world of artificial intelligence. Here's what's up for you this week and we begin with the Mirror newspaper, the pop megastar Taylor Swift, who's become the latest victim of AI misuse after extremely graphic and suggestive images created by AI circulated on social media. Meanwhile, the US president also fell foul of AI fakery after people received pre-recorded phone calls using artificial intelligence to mimic Joe Biden's voice. According to The Guardian, the message urged New Hampshire residents not to vote in last Tuesday's primary. The Telegraph carries a warning from UK spy chiefs that artificial intelligence tools are making email scams more convincing than ever before. New Delhi Television Online has this remarkable story about how police turned to artificial intelligence to unravel a Delhi murder mystery. They used AI not only to identify the victim, but then used it again to lead them to arrest the people accused of the murder. And finally, PC Gamer reports on comments made by Bill Gates earlier this week when he was asked about the threat of artificial intelligence. The Microsoft co-founder said, well, the key thing is that the good guys have better AI than the bad guys. So with me now, our weekly AI guru, uh, Priya Lakhani. He's chief executive of Century Tech. It's an artificial intelligence education company uh, that develops uh, AI-powered learning tools. Nice to see you. Love to see Loads you. Loads to get through here. Yeah. There's a bit of a theme, though, isn't there? There's not much good news in the pile of stories today. No, but um, it covers the full spectrum, which is why I think it's so interesting. I think today we're going to see a little bit of the good, mm. but a lot of the bad and the ugly. And it um, might get us into that conversation of not so much regulation, but how authorities might think of kind of clamping down on some of the darker side of AI. Absolutely. I mean, that's definitely the question that everyone's been asking and was the focus of the UK AI Safety Summit late last year. Um, and I think what you're going to see from today, and I think this is really important, Ben, and I think people can ask for this, is look, this is it's a race, actually, mm. against the bad actors, right? And so it's not about just sitting there and pondering and pontificating. This is about acting because today we're just going to see a multitude of stories where things have gone wrong. There is a really positive one with, um, in terms of forensics, which we will get onto, though. Yes, I promise you that. some good news. Thank yes, you there's for a little bit of a glimmer. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with the mirror. Uh, this yeah. is Taylor Swift, and people looking at social media today may have seen some pretty distressing, pretty horrible images. They were fake images. They're deep fake images yeah. created by AI. Just to explain what they were. Yeah, so what one can do with generative AI, so it's AI that can generate text, media, uh, images, is bad actors can create pornographic content. Mm. Um, this is a really, really horrific story. So I woke up to it this morning, lots of people did, where uh, Taylor Swift is viral on, uh, on X, and someone's created some, I'm not gonna even begin to describe them, but some horrendous, horrific images of her related to um, the person that she's dating at the moment and his football team. Mm. Um, they originated today. Uh, one was nearly live, one post for around 17 hours. They, Taylor Swift AI was trending on X with more than 58,000 posts uh, in the morning. One post gained more than 45 million views before it was eventually removed. 24,000 reposts, hundreds of thousands of likes and bookmarks. So even people liking and bookmarking, yeah, honestly, shame on you. Um, look, the, the problem is, is the real problem is when you're, when you're thinking about deep fakes and pornographic images, right? 96% um, of deep fakes are pornographic mm. and 99% of the 96% target women, right. right? And so this is a significant problem. Um, and actually, it's another type of technology that creates some of this problem. So when these things are on social media and they go viral, people hide behind anonymity. Mm. So even though when you wanted to talk about regulation, you want to talk about laws, can Taylor Swift go to you know, harassment laws, uh, privacy laws, defamation, copyright, intellectual property not yet been used, uh, data protection. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, a New York and uh, a New Jersey representatives in the US saying they want to reintroduce a bill that they introduced last year and get that passed, which makes it a federal crime uh, to create and manipulate images for pornographic uh, purposes. You've got the Online Safety Act in the UK that introduces, I think, Section 66. Um, it amends the Sexual Offences Act where this is illegal. You can point to all of those things, but when you haven't got the perpetrator in your hands, actually you know, that creates a huge problem. And then are those laws potentially, I mean, they're not meaningless, right? Because they are deterrents, obviously, and, and they work in many, they will work in many cases. But 
Anonymity here, for me, is a significant issue because you can hide behind these anonymous handles and then you can hide behind you know, lots of IP addresses. Yeah. And the FBI, for example, that have been looking into deepfakes for some time, um, they struggle to find these people. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing. There are two real issues here, aren't there? One is who is creating these things and yeah. able to create them. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the other about how they are shared. Yeah. And like you said, you might close down one Twitter account, and yeah. you might limit access to certain websites, but then it pops up somewhere else. And once it's out there, it's out there. Yeah, and then the issue with even closing down the site, so X is already in pretty hot water with the European Commission. So they have formally uh, started proceedings looking at, it's a formal review essentially of how X dealt with misinformation, disseminating fake news and misinformation mm -hmm. uh, last year when it came to the Middle East and the war, right? Um, and they're in hot water over that already. Um, and actually what people are looking at is that when Elon Musk became CEO, they reduced the content moderation team. So how are they even dealing uh, with these issues is, it, you know, it, and this is the problem, like how are you actually going to solve these problems? Mm. So um, those issues, and I must say, my daughter, the reason I was late even coming in today, was she sent me here with Swifty bracelets <laughs> <laughs> in solidarity with Taylor Swift. Mummy, please <laughs> wear this and shake them on the BBC. Um, but people are, people are genuinely horrified. I mean, one of the ways is to, is to act with your feet, and I'll tell you how. Yeah. If there's one star, time person of the year, who has an enormous following that's global, it's Taylor Swift. Mm. And I was thinking about this today. It's what I, could, what I would like to call the Swifty strike. Go on. So they could organise that if they're not happy with the way in which channel, platforms are dealing with this, big tech are dealing with mm -hmm. this, log off for a week. Yeah. Log off for two weeks. What's the consequence? Well, yeah. advertisers won't be happy. Yeah. Right? That will protect. If you want to get a tech CEO or any CEO's attention, affect their bottom line. Yeah. Right? Don't wait for regulation. Mm. And then also, there's a long term effect. If you switch off for a week, you go somewhere else, don't you? Mm. Right? And then you Stock might look. Stock new habits. Yeah, exactly. And it creates that effect. So, anyway, that's yeah. just an idea of mine. But, and she's um, very good at mo kind of mobilizing her fan base, isn't she? Absolutely. Such a huge fan base. Um, let's turn to something else um, that's really interesting. It's sort of in a similar vein, isn't it? This is President Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. And people may have got a phone call thinking it was a pre recorded message from President Biden advising them not to vote. Uh, just explain why this is a problem. So this is a problem because it's fake, yep. right? So it's a robocall, it's, it's someone using AI to, to fake his voice. It did affect voters. So voters, they actually included the phone number of, of, a, of a candidate in, in that particular area, right? So because they included a phone number, she got phone calls from people saying, oh, I'm not supposed to vote. I, I got a call from Joe Biden, mm. right? And so if people are even thinking that, mm. actually, then that's affecting voters and their actions. So the problem with this is when it affects elections, right, it threatens democracy. Yeah. That's the problem, right? Democracy relies on truth, right? We want to know what we're seeing. We want to know what we're hearing. And especially in a year like this, with what is the number? Two billion people are going to vote this year. 50 this year most is, populous nations on earth will go is, to the polls. Exactly. It's, it affects the global uh, population because of the amount of elections this year. But yeah. the, problem, the problem we all have with this, you know, people talking about, we've been talking about this for years. Years. And people say, oh, deep fakes are overblown. Mm. They're overblown. No, actually, what happened was the people talking about them were talking about them early and early enough for you to get your act together to do something about it. So even the FEC, so that's the Federal uh, Election Commission, have been put under massive pressure mm. to actually make a decision about AI. And I'll tell you why. Their authority is limited. Yeah. Okay, so what they decide doesn't actually affect, you know, Joe Bloggs, mm. right? Mm. It affects them. Um, political campaign campaigns. And when you've got people like Ron DeSantis who used a deep fake against Trump, yeah. right, President Trump, former President Trump, then actually you've got a really bad example being set by by potential yeah. leaders, right? And then you've got the FEC being incredibly slow. Yeah. And then while states have made their own rules and yeah. platforms are making it their own rules. It needs to be cross-border. Th the because problem by is, its very nature, it is cross-border. Yeah, exactly. The first, the first two stories, if they tell them anything, is get your skates on. Yeah. If the EU can create their AI act yeah. and pass it in the limited time they actually did, yeah. making an amendment for large language models and generative AI, they can do this. Yeah, that's the thing, regulators too slow all the while, the impact is being felt around the world, isn't it? Um, so scams, another thing um, that we will all feel, scams getting more and more clever uh, and a lot easier to create using yeah. AI. Because, and this is the issue, isn't it? They've become more convincing because it's hard to tell what's human and what's 
AI. Yeah, so this is a really great report, and actually it's really easy reading if anyone wants to look at it. It's from the National Cyber Security Centre. They, they released a report this, this week. They actually said it's really essential to focus not only on the risks posed by AI, but also the opportunities when yeah. it comes to cybercrime. Okay, so when it comes to what, what you were talking about there, so luring customers, luring people to clicking on a link and sharing their details, so um, phishing attacks, uh, you know, ransomware, That's so right, holding... install something on your computer. Absolutely. So what they're saying in the report is actually... they. They believe it's highly likely, they have this spectrum of what likelihoods look like, and right. actually it's, it's like 95% likely, that those novice hackers, not very sophisticated hackers, will be increasing their activity because they can now use AI to help them. Right. So, so, and the point is just trust no one. If you get a link, right, if you see something that looks really, really similar, and the, the thing is they can now make the language more similar. You, know, you used to be able to spot an issue with the spelling. Yeah. They can dodgy correct spelling, it. Dodgy spelling, yeah. punctuation. And then they stuff. go on in the report to talk about advanced attacks. Um, you know, advanced tasks, for example, uh, you know, looking at weaknesses and vulnerabilities in people's networks and all sorts of areas that will cause mass chaos. There's about 11 trillion reasons for, for us to work in this area because by 2025 they expect it will cost us $10.6 trillion. Um, so there's a reason to act. There's a really good reason to <laughs> act. Um, and the fact is that supply chains, uh, so Gartner did a report and they said over the next two years, 45% of global organisations, so this is for all the CEOs listening to this, will be impacted in some way by a supply chain attack. So if you've not got someone you know, consciously looking at security yeah. and actively looking at that or working with some of the best companies in the world, Dark Trace is one of them, yeah. uh, from the UK, then, then that's, that's something that should be on your to-do list Do this it week. Now, <laughs> um, speaking of other good uses of AI, um, this one is fascinating. This mm. is from NDTV. Um, a man who was murdered in Delhi uh, and the police were struggling to identify him, they used AI. To yeah. Do it. How? Yeah. So they you reconstruct the face using artificial intelligence. So, so the, the issue here is from the picture you can see from the image, right? His on on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. I think it's on the left hand side. Yeah. But 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 obviously, if you find an un unidentified body, right, it, eyes are closed. Um, potentially, actually, in other cases, there could be a lot of sort of you know disfigurement, issue, disfigurement yeah. exactly. And and so they reconstructed the face. They used a, dis a coloration coloring technique to basically uh, make the lips less blue. Mm -hmm. They opened his eyes. They also enhanced it to make the eyes more lifelike. And then they essentially printed that and put it all over the place. They spread yeah. it with all their networks. And the brother of the deceased identified. Uh, the poster is his wow. brother and then they used surveillance techniques so mobile phone surveillance for example to figure out and CCTV and footage to figure out exactly what happened and they've actually made a few arrests. It's so. incredible, isn't it? And it's really reassuring to see AI being used for good. Uh, we've not yep. got much time. I want to talk about Bill Gates uh, because this is all about you can't stop people using AI yep. but the idea that if the good guys are one step ahead of the bad guys that's not a bad place to be. It's not a bad place to be, but then, you know, with, for example, the, the stories from, you know, about cybercrime, you've got this kind of arms race, right, between cybersecurity professionals and cyber criminals and, and who's going to be one step ahead. But yes, you've got advances in education, in healthcare, in this story we had in Delhi there, you know, you've got this kind of ever evolving landscape of AI and technologies being used to help um, with, you know, arrests and identifying um, various perpetrators, etc. So there is a lot of good there, and we talked about that a lot in previous uh, episodes of, of this part of the program, um, but but the point is is that in any, uh, Bill Gates is sort of yes, there's good, yes, there's bad. Let there be more good and less bad. It's, it's pretty obvious. It's just there's a lot of work to be done, particularly by policymakers. Priya, so good to have you with us talking us through those stories this week. Priya Lakani, there, Chief Executive of Century Tech. Thank you. Uh,